for Miss Rita to the rescue. And I'm here for today's Cricut Chat. So happy to see so many people on this morning. Good morning. Let's see. It is sunny and super cold out today. Super, super cold out. Um, here in Massachusetts, north of Boston in Peabody, Massachusetts, my hometown. And today we are going to be working on Valentine. So I hope it gets you a little warm out there. Um, oh, okay. So somebody's reporting that today on HSN is Cricket Day and also Anna Griffin Day. Hello, Leslie. Are you as cold as I am? Leslie's also in Massachusetts. It's a cool 59 and sunny here. 59? I would be wearing shorts, Eileen. Well, I don't wear shorts too much anymore, but I would be enjoying that sunshine. Um, and yeah, 70s. That's like perfect. I know where you lived, right? Jupiter. Jupiter, Florida, which is one of the prettiest places on earth. I actually spent a couple of weeks there one time. Well, it was actually separate. I, I went there like three or four times um, and stayed right on the beach. And it was just so gorgeous. I had a friend who had a condo on the beach. Um, and he later, he later moved there <laughs> from Massachusetts. And uh, yeah, he had a lot of money though. <laughs> Not, not for me, not, not my kind of thing. But anyway, um, it's still a beautiful thing, uh, Jupiter. And so is Massachusetts, a beautiful thing in this time of year. It's, we've got like, I don't know, a couple inches of snow on the ground and uh, it's cold. And so I want to craft. I hope you want to craft with me. Today, we're going to be making a really fun Valentine. And uh, I, of course, had to you know, play with it <clears throat> a little bit. And I decided to use iron on on it. And I did that for a couple of other uh, things. I did notice when I when I'm looking at that this morning, because yesterday was a crazy day here um, at my house because everybody was here. It was the day off for Martin Luther King, uh, Memorial Day. And my sister was here and she was trying to clean and she made more of a mess for me, but oh no. Anyway, everybody was around. Um, yeah, we're going to bake. Yes. We love baking on snow days, especially Eileen. Um, oh, oh, yeah, 33 and rain again. I do not like the rain. I'm not a big fan of the rain unless I am in my craft room and then that's okay. But um, but I love cold days. I like, I actually spent the day in my pajamas yesterday. Um, I did not shower or put on, you know, undergarments. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm actually more productive when I am dressed and ready, like when I actually, it's sort of like my sister says, you know, make your bed every morning because then you have something that you've accomplished. And she actually has a to-do list and she crosses off, make your bed. The first, she, she, she's a little extreme. She jumps out of bed and then makes it. I'm like, not me. I got to do my thing first and then I'll come back and make my bed. But I really do feel like dressing up and being, you know, I, I mean, not dressing up, but not like lounging around in PJs. I just feel like I get more stuff done. Anyway, um, all right. So today we're going to make this card. But before we get started, I just wanted to remind you all that the January giveaway is going on now. The entry form for the giveaway is going on now. You need to check the link in the description of this video and enter your name and email address so that you will be entered to win a $700 prize, uh, a Cricut Maker 3 with everything, uh, plus a learning plan of your choice, whether it's going to be the paper learning plan or the vinyl learning plan. Um, I actually am leaning towards the paper. I think that's the better of the two plans, but um, yeah, right? So Cheryl's saying she has to shower every day. I haven't, um, I haven't like 
gotten to that point. When I was working, I was like every day, shower, do your hair, get your makeup on, wear your clothes, you know, your fancy clothes and stuff like that. I mean, I, I've relaxed a little bit from that, but my sister has it. She still does it. Anyway, um, so definitely get your name in, okay? Because I want you to be eligible to win this great prize. We do this once a month and it's currently going on. There's two weeks. Uh, it started on Sunday. Day. So today's, what, the 17th? So there's still like 12 more days to get your name in. And you only have to put your name in once, okay? Um, and all you need to do is be following me on my YouTube channel, which you're going to want to do anyway because we're doing great projects like this. Uh, yeah. And we're going to hit our 25,000. I have to, I had to revise my goal. Uh, so I'm trying to hit 25,000 by my birthday. I hope that that happens. Uh, my birthday's in April. So please, 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 please um, support me by becoming a subscriber. There's no cost to you. And it really does help me. Um, more subscribers means more views and more opportunities for people to learn about um, how to use their crickets. And that's what I do. My name is Rita Cavicchio, by the way. And I am uh, the person that runs this channel. It's called Cricket Chat with Miss Rita. I've been a cricket product expert since 2014. I've been cricketing since 2012. And um, and I just love everything by cricket. And I'm particularly uh, into paper crafts such as banners and garlands and cards but you can you know you can take what you want from here and do your own thing I've seen people take things and turn it into like car uh, not just cards but like shirts and and framed art and stuff like that so this card is really rather interesting I'm going to show you where I got it after I um after I group it here, I'm going to group it. So this card is um, actually a, a an older card that I have made some adjustments to. And so that's kind of my thing. I like to take the older things and sort of make adjustments to it. So um, I went to images and go to image sets. And I typed in the word Valentine. Valentine. And you'll notice when you do this, it's going to bring up any image set that has the word Valentine in it. So even Valentine's will come up. That's why I just did Valentine. So I'm looking for an old image set that is, it's going to be on the bottom here. Um, and I'm passing by so many wonderful things that I'm like, ah, I love this. I love this. So here it is. We're going to go to Valentine's Day cards. So if you don't like this particular card that I'm doing, um, you can do uh, any one of these cards. And it's the same sort of technique. Uh, today we're going to do this one, the one at the very top, because I think it looks kind of vintagey, and I like anything vintage. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to add it to my canvas, which is down here. Okay, so this is the after. So I'm going to hide this, just so you can see. Whoops, why didn't I hide it? Hide it. There we go. Okay, so this is what you get. Let's ungroup it. So when you ungroup it, you get your envelope and you get your card and you get this back. This card was made from uh, before there were insert cards. And so it was a very basic card. Now I've done it the way that it was, it was set up, but to be really honest with you, to have a card that has this score line here and then have a cut so close, it causes problems with the folding. It causes that right there, that little sort of half inch there to um, lift and you have to work really hard on getting it closed. So instead of doing it this way, what I decided to do was take that score line right on out. So I hit detach and there's my score line. I'm going to save it for later. And then I am actually going to make sure that this card is set up as a um, 
10, 10 inches uh, by seven inches wide. So it's usually seven, uh, 10 inches wide by seven inches. Yeah, it's usually that seven by ten. It's usually 10 by seven, but this is seven by 10 because of the way that it's folded. So I had to unlock it. You see up here where this is a lock thing. So I had to unlock it. So now I'm going to go over to shapes and I'm going to grab a square and I'm going to unlock this as, as well. And I'm going to make it uh, seven inches wide by five inches tall. I'm actually going to make it a little bit wider. So let's make it seven and a half right and so you see what i'm going to do here is i'm going to make sure i'm going to grab both of these i'm going to do a line top not left as we've done in the past but a line top what that means is that those two layers are going to align at the top Duh. right <laughs> and then once i have that aligned to the top i select them both and i'm coming down here down here i'm gonna back up a little bit i'm noticing i'm not all in the the screen so here we go back up back up beep beep all right and then i'm going to choose slice down here okay now what that does is it frees up that back part of the card and now we have a card front okay um first we're also going to duplicate this card uh, this front card. We're going to change the color to, oh, I don't know. What did I decide to change the color, the middle color? Oh, I, I decided to change it to green. So this is going to be the front. This is going to be the middle. I'm going to show you how to, to change that. But before we do that, I'm going to make the actual card base. So again, I go over to shapes and I grab a square, unlock that square, and I am going to do seven inches wide by 10 inches high, okay? And I'm gonna make this white. And then I grab my um, score line, which I have to arrange it to the front, bring it to the front. And you can see here, so I can see it. And then I'm going to select those two and I am going to do a line center. You see that? I'm a line center. And uh, let's see, my score line's a little bit bigger than that, which I'm kind of fussy. So I'm gonna change that to be just seven inches wide. <laughs> I talk about my sister being fussy, but, um, but I guess I'm just as fussy as she is. So once I have the score line centered, I'm going to grab both of those and I am going to hit attach, which is down here. <coughs> so you attach your score lines and your writing. That's what you use attach for. Um, and so now we have a perfect size card and then we have these two fronts. Now, if I were to do nothing on these, they're exactly the same, okay? So if I were to do nothing, then um, it wouldn't make sense to have this. So we're going to actually play around with this version and we're gonna go to contour. Now in contour, what we're going to do is decide what things should appear as green, okay? And what things should appear as white. And so I think I'm going to make the, the big Valentine's word, the Valentine's word right here, Valentine's, and make sure you get that I, um, that dot over the I and the E and the S. And I think I'll also choose the the little flourishes as well and whoops let's click on that I don't know why it's not working why is it not working oh good and then I think I'll also choose these top two bars now this is what you have after you contour and what we'll do is bring this to the front and you can see that when these are now layered, you're going to have that Valentine showing. And this is going to be in the back. So we'll arrange this into the back. Spring, send to back. So this is what it's gonna look like. But actually, I wanted to have the white 
be Valentine. So I'm gonna go back to contour and I'm gonna hide all the contours and then I am going to um, choose these other things over here. So I'm going to, let's see, we'll keep that green. So we'll turn that and that and these. I think that would be fun. Um, so you see, you're not stuck with what you originally did. You can go back and redo it if it does. it's not to your liking, which a lot of times I do that. <laughs> I do that. All right, let's see. Oh, I messed up. The D is not right. So let's go back to contour and make sure I grab and, and turn that contour on. So now let's see what it looks like. Ah, this is great. You see that? Happy Valentine's Day. And I like that this is vintage um, looking. So I'm, you know, it's a vintage looking design. So I decided that I was going to use iron on for the pink, which this is that iron on that I didn't think I would ever use. And I do use it now. And so that's what I'm going to use. Now for these other pieces, the green and the white, I'm going to be using, um, just regular cardstock, and we will cut that out. But first, how about a sentiment, right? How about a sentiment? So um, I went on the lookout for something because I thought, you know, this will be, um, this will be cute. I was thinking about, you know, I often don't make like schmoozy, schmoozy kind of Valentines, but I thought, you know, let's let's. Let's go all out with this, okay? So I went on the internet. Here I am on Facebook, but I'm going to go on Google. And what I put in the Google search is um, Valentine's Day sentiments for cards, right? And what came up after the ads, which, ugh. Yuck! Um, is uh, this Hallmark site, which is really great, called Valentine's Messages, What to Write in a Valentine's Day Card. And this is so great because, look, it has for your longtime love, for your boyfriend, for your fiancé, for singles, for tough times, all these different ones. And what I did was I just kind of cut and paste all these see that I just like selected them all and um and I put it in a note but I we don't have to do that for today what we have to do okay for a spouse or a partner let's find one <clears throat> um that we like uh I don't deserve you thanks for being mine eh um, nah, wishing you the sweetest, happy, I think that's the one I picked. I like this one. Wishing the sweetest, happiest day to my forever Valentine. So once you find what you want to do, do a command C for copy. You might do it differently if you have a different kind of computer than I do. Um, and then you're going to go over here to text. And once you have that text box, you can just do command V which puts your text right in the um, right in the text box, okay, which is kind of cool. And then I want to add a few um, page breaks. What do you call them? Carriage returns. I call them carriage returns, but you know, I don't know what they call them now. <laughs> Control C on Windows. Okay, thanks, Christy. Um, and now we are ready to format the text so that we can put it on the card. I think I'd like to do um, a pen inscription on this. So I want to go to um, up here to fonts. And I want to see, have you noticed, they changed this all in fonts. So they have all the Cricut ones. They have system ones. They have my bookmarked ones. And then ones that I've recently used. Isn't that awesome? This is the like, wow, my brain has, has exploded. So this is the one I recently used. It's called BFC Sugared Apples. 
and I kind of like it and it's all uppercase so I'm going to choose it and look what happened. It changed the font for me. Now, but I want this in to be writing. So I'm also going to go up here to style. And I'm going to change this to writing. Now, you'll notice the operation where it says pen has changed um, automatically for me. That didn't used to be the case. But now it is. So now I'm just going to take my little sentiment and I'm going to... Um, size it for the card. I need some room on this card to uh, to write my lovey-dovey nonsense on there. <laughs> nonsense. It's not nonsense, but you know what I mean. Um, and so I'm going to put it sort of with a little space at the top so I could put that person's name in and then my little signature on the bottom. So then I'm going to select this all and we're going to hit attach. Now, believe it or not, we are ready to go. We are ready to go. So we're going to come up here and we're going to hit make it. Now, because I am using smart iron on um on this pink color i need to change the load type over here material load type i'm going to change it to without mat okay now you guys know i really do like to make two cards at once because i want to use um i want to maximize the use of my paper or materials I should say so I'm going to change the project copies to two now but on here this one here is for the iron-on I am going to make sure to mirror this you see that I've mirrored this but I don't need to mirror the rest of it because the rest of it's going to be in paper so let's hit continue and we're going to work on, let's do the um, iron-on cutout first. Hi, Terry. Oh, thank you for that lovely compliment. Okay, so this is Cricut iron-on material. Now, you do not need to use a smart material. If you don't have a Maker 3, Explore 3, or uh, a Joy, um, you can't technically can't use it in your other machine so you could use this on a mat if you wanted to um, I'm using it because I have a maker three and I wanted to show you how the smart material works but this works this technique works for anything don't worry about I don't have a maker three yet <laughs> you don't have a maker three yet uh, all the machines are terrific and so this is just how you do it with the maker three um so you notice here under this this is the mat that we're using over here okay um and then what we're going to do is do browse all materials and you'll see here that these are the only compatible materials that I can do when I have without mat, okay? But if I were to go and change it to be on the mat, I would have all the materials, okay? So we're going to do smart iron on. This is just plain smart iron on. So we hit done, and then we're going to change the pressure to more because I think it actually cuts out better that way. Um, and let's go over to our machine so you can have a look. There's my lovely machine, and I'm going to take my iron on. Now, this is uh, the, the shiny side goes down. This is the part that gets cut. And so in, in the Maker 3, you're just going to put it underneath those guides and hit the load button. And one of the things I did notice about working with the smart materials, it really, I have my machine sort of like kitty cornered, but you really need to be careful that the, the product is in there so that it doesn't scrunch up. Because if you actually put it over and it's not like completely centered this way, you can jam your machine. Okay, you can jam your machine in a number of ways. And if you jam it, don't worry. If you get that red light, don't worry about it. Um, hit, turn it off and on so that it's no longer red. And then, then eject the material. And then you have to kind of start from scratch as far as your cut goes. You have to go back to um, choosing your cut settings and everything. All right, but we don't we didn't do that here. But I just wanted to remind you and tell you about this in case this happens. All right, we're gonna hit the play button. The play button. 
Oh, Santo just came in. I hope he's going to take those dogs for a walk. <laughs> you cheered out loud, Annette. Oh, all your husbands at home are going, who is this Miss Rita lady? But I'm so glad you joined me. And I say hello to all of those husbands out there that are that are putting up with, uh, with their lovely wives or whatever, your spouses. Um, out there. Now, while I'm waiting for this to cut, I do want to say that I'm going to put this on um, my mat. So I have a sheet of white and I have a sheet of green. I'm actually going to need two sheets of white. And um, for the white, I actually chose, actually, they're both. I just said actually like 10 times. I'm sorry. But um, I used Cricut cardstock for this. The reason why I chose Cricut cardstock instead of eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock that I normally use is because the Cricut cardstock has a little more heft to it. And because I'm adding a, um, a couple of layers on the front, um, I wanted it to be able to stand up okay on the card. So um, that's why I chose that. Normally I would, if I'm making a card that didn't have so many layers, I would use uh, the eight and a half by 11 that I get at the card stock, well, at the craft store. Oh, by the way, my some of my stuff from the craft store came in yesterday and my sister went to the Dollar Tree, the good Dollar Tree. Because I've been like, you guys with this Dollar Tree, it's not so great. And then she said, oh, you need to go to the Dollar Tree that used to be near Ann and Hope Plaza. Now, um, Ann and Hope is, was like one of those local stores that we had. And I absolutely adored it. It was kind of like... I don't know. It was the it was Walmart before there was Walmart. And it had everything including like sewing and records and things like that. And they had a store that they had uh they had to close up. It used to be actually at the Liberty Tree Mall. And um, they moved over to this place behind Chili's. And I haven't been over there. It's kind of tough to get in there. But my sister says, oh, it's really good. So she FaceTimed me at the uh, Dollar Tree because I was not getting out of my pajamas yesterday, right? So she FaceTimed me. And where she's going through... <laughs> through the store with her phone and she's like just showing me what's on the walls and I'm like oh get that oh get that right and she's like so you want one of that I'm like Teresa don't you realize what I'm I'm getting this stuff for my show and I always make two and so um and so she's like okay two of everything and then she came over with bags and bags of stuff and we just went through them all. So many shiny things. And also um, some really interesting things that we're going to redo. Uh, so when you're looking at the dollar shop, you have to kind of think of possibilities, right? Because it's just all this like... Um, just, what do you call them? Like, you know, just uh, supplies, really. And... Um, so there's my cutout, and I'm going to just cut that, and let's put the white in there, and I am going to choose my white. Now, I did change it so that I have um, the scoring stylus. Of course, the, the machine pushed it out on me because I didn't choose a scoring stylus first, and so I'm going to put this in. I have my scoring stylus in. I always just kind of keep it there, but just so that you know, you know, if you don't want to keep it in there, this is the stylus, and what you have to do is you have to put it in so that, that this little arrow is hidden. See that? It's hidden. Okay, and then my computer does some weird things. Okay, okay, Apple Watch, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> All right, we're ready to go with the scoring stylus, and then we also have to get a pen ready. So I think we'll just use the uh, black pen. Oh, here comes Mother. Hi, Mom. Yeah. How are you? Uh, 
Well, I'm going to be okay as soon as I walk in on the sun. I know, the sun. All right, so we hit go. And remember that it always does scoring first with the Cricut. So you're going to do scoring, and then you're going to do writing, and then it does the cutting. So there it goes, doing the scoring. And now I'm going to take out my scoring stylus, and I'm going to put in my, my pen, and remember... That it has to Give hide. Me a carrot from him. What you gave him a carrot? The dogs can eat carrots. The dogs can eat carrots, mom. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if this one will eat them now. Well, you don't have to give them to them, but if it fell on the floor, then and they got it, then they can eat it. You know what I mean? You're there to feed the um to feed the piggies. All right. So while I'm waiting for this, I am going to. Cut this along here. And I'm going to put this back into the box because that's the way I do it. Even if it's just a little bit, I put it back in the box because it's easier to, to stack it. And I know the difference. Um, okay, so let's see. Put it back in the box. Now I am also going to need my Easy Press Mini and I'm going to need the mat, which I have this cute one that's like, I think it's eight by 10. I really like this one. I don't know if it's eight by 10, let me check. Yeah, it's about eight by 10. It's got cornered edges. So we'll, we'll call it eight by 10. All right, let me move you down here so you can see what I'm doing. So here's my cutout for iron-on, and you can see, I hope you can see that there, there's my two cutouts right here. Before I get to uh, cutting it out, ah, what's going on? Everything's attacking me today. Move, move, move. Okay. I am going to slice off this part because I don't need it, and it's going to be a scrap. Now, I can't put this back into my machine like this but I can save it as a scrap. So I'm going to save it as a scrap. I have a box underneath my desk and I just throw those scraps right on in. By the way, look, my sister got me this adorable thing. It says I woof you and it's a dog. It's a corgi really wearing a bow tie and heart shaped glasses. She did not get this at the Dollar Tree. If you're looking for it, she got it at Christmas tree shop. So if you're a Corgi lover, Babs, I know you're there, um, you might want to check out the Christmas tree shop. I think you guys have those around because I know we, those started um, on, on the Cape here in Massachusetts, but I think they've made their way across the nation anyway. Christmas tree shop. My sister does all the kind of shopping. Um, she goes to all the stores. So, so we had a lot of fun yesterday with the Dollar Tree stuff. And I had fun too because I didn't have to leave the comfort of my home. I'm getting to be a bit of a hermit, I'll be honest with you. But I think it's just the, the weather. Uh, and then come spring, I'll be able to go out. All right, so you see I separated these two and then I'm just going to take my weeding uh, tool and I'm going to remove the extra parts, the parts that got cut. All right, so here we go. And and it sounds like the, the white's almost done. It's cutting the the it's cutting the card out. So I think what I'm gonna do is while I'm sitting here, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna put in the green. Hey, so my friend Loretta, I'm gonna have a couple of these to uh, give away. Why don't we do three? We'll do three, okay? And um, Loretta, you can find our three lucky winners the way you do it so well. I'm going to actually put the green in while I'm over here. Might as well keep that machine cutting, right? All right, so let's continue on here and I'm just removing all the extra here. There we go. Let's 
coming out really nice. And if you don't have an Easy Press Mini, um, if you have, for instance, a regular Easy Press, you could do this. But I like the mini for my paper crafts. It's just convenient. I can keep it in my area. I usually do all of my um, iron on uh, on the other side of my workstation. So I like to have the mini on this side. Maybe I need another mini. <laughs> Wouldn't that be splurging? I actually bought um, one for my son. He really is into patches and he wants to learn how to make his own so um so I got him the mini because he was always forever asking me could you put this patch on my shirt or my whatever so I said look here you can do it uh, for yourself because I'm trying to get him to learn different things he's um by the way he's 17 and he's autistic but he is um, very, you know, he, he does want to learn things. Some things, not so much. Like yesterday I said to Santa, why don't you teach Owen how to use the snowblower? And Owen was like, no, I don't, I don't want to use the snowblower. <laughs> right. And even Santa was like, yeah, you know, I'm going to do that. He, he's got an injury, but his injury is all most healed. In fact, he needs to get his stitches out this week. So I think that was just an excuse. I think Santo really likes to snow blow. All right. So there, um, there you go. Yeah, it's a good thing, right? I want him to learn different, different techniques because he really doesn't know what he wants to do when he grows up. Um, and he's almost there. He's a grown up practically. So, okay. So we finished the weeding here. And if it helps you, you could also just kind of you know, trim around this if you want, if it helps you. All right. And let's get on to the card. So here's the card that I made. Now, I, I did it kind of in a hurry because my sister was over and everything. So I didn't fix it right here. So we're going to fix this one and then we're going to make it all together. So... Here's my, um, here's my cutout, and there is the next sheet. That's going to be on the second part of that, right? So you see how that's going to work? So what we're going to do is we're going to heat up our mini. We only need to heat it up to one, I think. I don't know. Could someone check the heating guide? Right, Joan? I mean, I love, love, love to use um, different kinds of... This year is going to be all about um, all about using different materials. I have amassed a um, Cricut Heat Guide. Let me just check. So I'm going to check the Cricut Heat Guide. Let me just show you up here so, um, so that we get... There's my... Cricut website, but I'm looking for the Cricut Heat Guide, which is right here. And I have it actually bookmarked. So I'm using my Easy Press Mini, and I'm going to be using every day. No, I'm going to use Smart Iron On. That's what I use, Smart Iron On. And then the base is going to be cardstock. Then I'm going to hit apply. It does say low, so I need to do it on low for 25 seconds, okay? So let's get down here again. And so much going on today. What's going on? All right, so I need to heat this up, and it's actually already warmed up to low. One little squiggly is low, two is medium, and three is high. So we're going to put it on low. Now, if you do not have one of these minis, you can use your easy press, your regular easy press, or you can use an iron. Um, but 
all the time when you're doing this, it's very important that you protect your surfaces. Now, I work on this all the time, and it is called a self-healing mat. You can get them either at Cricut or your craft store. They're also really popular in quilt shops, and um, they're great because you can cut on it, and you can assemble on it, but the one thing you cannot do is apply heat to it because when you do the heat, it will bubble. So um, I use this 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 is a um, easy press mat and um, and that's going to protect my surface plus remember the easy press comes in this little cradle so makes it a lot easier so this is what's going to get ironed on and here is our top sheet with the iron on so I am just working real hard to match everything up and then I'm going to start with this and this will kind of like stick it there. It won't really move once I go through. And then I can go ahead and do the heat on all of the surfaces there. Now don't worry um, that there's nothing there because there's no there's a cutout, so it doesn't matter, right? And this will take, it will take longer than 25 seconds because it's 25 seconds for the whole piece. And that means like this piece and that piece um, needs, that part of it needs to get 25 seconds. So it's definitely going to take longer. If you have a bigger easy press, you could certainly use that. And I just kind of like make sure I do smooth, even strokes. Quite literally yesterday, I was like rushing to get this done because my sister was um, was removing all the stuff from my mom's bedroom. My mom lives with me, as you can as you can hear from earlier, and she's feeding my guinea pigs right now. But um, so my mom moved into Owen's old room. Now Owen is not a clean kid. He's not. And also, I am kind of a hoarder. So when he moved, when she moved into Owen's room, we just moved her into the room and we didn't touch the closet. So she came over yesterday after we did our, you know, Dollar Tree haul. And the closet is the, it's a beautiful closet it's really big and so many things were jammed into it and she took them all out and now in my hallway there's boxes and boxes of stuff that I need to go through that are all like Owen's you know his his old toys and stuff like that and then some things that I kept because I I really want to keep it like sweater that I made for him and um a Spider-Man costume that my dad gave him when he was like three or four and so those are things that kind of have sentimental value so I need to go through all that stuff now I have closets and spaces like that throughout my house and so it <laughs> I mean I've been here over 20 years so it's just it gets a little bit hairy when you go to try to find something that you you've had for a long time so um so hopefully my sister will push me to get my entire house cleared out of all this stuff I mean I like to keep those things because they're precious right and uh, we're going to actually be doing a photo book in the spring because my mother's photos kind of were all in a bag and I have all boxes and boxes of photos everywhere. So I didn't want to um, lose them. And I thought my mother would like to have like a photo book. So I thought we would do, hot. we would do one of those together. Okay, so we do need to let this uh, cool down. It's super hot, all right? So let's let that cool down and we'll just kind of get ready on um, the the card so we're going to fold this card right here and if it is helpful to you you can use something like the scraping tool just to get that nice crease on there now when we get done we're going to have to put glue on here and attach this but that's it that's basically it but um, I want to keep this because I need to 
We need to fix that other card, remember? So here we go. It's working. It's working! Um, just be careful when you're removing this because you got a lot of different pieces here, you see? Um, and you need to be careful you don't rip anything, right? So here we go. Weeps. I really like this technique because A, it uses up uh, some materials that I have. I have a lot of vinyl and iron on just hanging around. I mean, I've spent, I don't know, tons of time trying to organize it and everything, but I got to a point where I was just like, you know what, I just have to give some of this away. I just have way too much because I'm kind of uh, like a hoarder, as I mentioned, but also I get being a product expert for so long, I get all the new stuff that comes in and also I get, um, I get all the mystery boxes. So you see, I saved this little sheet just to kind of protect my other card that didn't have it fully on there. So I'm just going to just use my Easy Press Mini on those areas that I know need to be fixed. Okay, so two birds, one stone. The stone being the Easy Press Mini. <laughs> All right, that one should do it. Okay, then what do we have here? We have just to put this on this. All right, and we're going to use glue. Here's my glue bottle, because we have to get in all these little crevices with the, with the um, letters. And we're just gonna put just a tiny bit. We do not want glue to come seeping out underneath those cuts. So let's make sure. I can hear the dog eating the carrot, Mom. He likes the carrots. Oh, that's good for him. My dogs love fresh vegetables, green beans, carrots, lettuce. Um, lettuce is a really big deal in my house. My son makes salads all the time and, um, and they, we get the romaine hearts, you know, and so that way most of the out part the you know, the leaves part are edible and he just cuts off the bottom, which is the core, right? And, um... And then he just throws it to the to the dog. The dog catches it in midair and goes chomp, 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 and chomps the whole thing. It's really quite a scene. It's quite a scene. I'm sure you all have those kinds of things if you have animals um, that they do that you're like, uh, will they like this? And he, especially teddy bear, absolutely adores when we make salads because he just really really likes it all right he threw it at you <laughs> no um we have a lot we do a lot of fresh foods in this house because of course um we have the guinea pigs and that's all the guinea pigs actual food food um, and <laughs> uh, last week, and I, I didn't, I said, no, 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 they're vegan. They're super vegans. Like they don't eat any meat or uh, poultry, nothing that's like that, a protein. They just eat fresh veggies. So we always have a ton of fresh veggies in the house. So there is our finished card. Let's have a look also at the card we just fixed. Did um, Loretta, did you pick some winners for today? If if you're a winner, you need to send me an email at Rita to the rescue at gmail.com. I will. How can you find community in the tablet? 
Um, I will show you tomorrow. I'll bring my iPad, and that's similar to the tablet, okay? So Paralyse is asking about Cricut Community. We have to come back and, and look at Cricut Community because I do have some new followers. All right, all right. All right, so this is the one that was done, but it it didn't fix over here, wasn't fixed over there, and now it is. And there is our beautiful vintage Happy Valentine's Day card. Isn't that great? Um, and we have a couple winners. Make sure you send me uh, the email at MissRita to the rescue at gmail.com. Okay, so let's go back to Design Space before I let you go. I'm going to go back to Design Space, and I'm going to show you a little bit about the community. Now, I mentioned this to you because I heard through the grapevine that there may be some more challenges that are coming up. So please uh, pay attention uh, to this because I want you guys to participate in the challenges. There are all kinds of great prizes. And the folks at Cricut are really excited about it. So, um, so definitely you want to learn this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this project. And if I wanted to share it on the Cricut community, what I would do is once I've saved it, I would click on the name right here. Click on the name. Now, you see I already put in a picture. I um, made this public. There's a toggle switch so I can turn this off. And then when I turn it on, I get a pop-up and then I get confetti that says, yay, it's now in the community. Okay, so it's taking its sweet time, but um, that's what it does. Okay, there's my confetti. And if you want to change any of the project details, just click on that thing that looks like a pencil, add your pictures, add your, change your name or, or um, update the name. And then I put a regular description that includes the sentiment in here and then tags. So tags are really important um, because going forward, forward as people get their projects um, on in the public, the tags are going to be really important because you'll be able to search by them in the community. I'm not sure that you can really do that with the tags right now, but um, definitely want to do tags. You don't want to be able to, you don't want to have a bunch of projects in the community and not have this information filled out because it's a courtesy to other people you know, and they will not feature your um, project unless you have a picture, okay? So that's about sharing on the community, okay? And let's just go over to the community. So we're on my regular computer. What's the base material for Friday's Joy Project, please? Um, what did I say we're going to make? Signs? I was thinking... Sign. So we're going to need a uh, wood that's uh, at least four inches wide um, and at least uh, 20, 20 plus inches long. OK, so we're going to actually make signs on Friday with our Cricut Joy that we're going to iron on. OK, and we're actually going to do a front and back of that. That's on Friday. Now, um, what you want to do for communities, you're going to go to home and you can see here there's community right here. And um, you can see here under this tab, it says recent community projects. You can do see more like this. And why is it taking so long? Everybody's freezing, I guess. So this are all the... Co we made it to 72,000 uh, community projects. Isn't that great? And if you want to search for someone like me, you could just type in Miss Rita and it will bring you up. Some of them are mine and some of them are inspired by me. So for instance, Loretta, who is our fearless admin, you can see she shared this and somehow she must have got my name. Yep, she put in the description, Cricut Chat with Miss Rita. And then what I love about this is it shows you all the different images that she used um, to make it uh, a project. 
Now, you want to be careful about sharing projects that aren't part of Cricut Design Space. So that's one thing you should consider. Um, if you found a great project, say, from Dreaming Tree or something like that, people, if they find your project, they're going to want to make it. And, um, and so if you are sharing things uh, that are not, you know, because somebody had to, you had to buy them originally. So if you had to buy them originally, um, or if even if you got them for free off the internet, um, you won't be able to share it completely like these are. Um, these are shared, okay? So um, let us also just have a look at this. And this is one of my projects and it is by me. Look at Miss Rita. And then my name, Miss Rita to the Rescue, clicks here so I can click on my name, uh, pretending it's not me, right? And I can see this is my profile. So this is where all of my projects will live. And I can also change this image. I can do a little about section. And then over here on the right-hand side are my followers and the people that I am following. The number is not equal, but I have committed to following everybody that follows me. So let's say hello to Louise, Adela, Catherine, PJ, Kelly, L, uh, Manucha. Uh, oh, I don't know if I'm going to get this right. Akiropita. Ak Akiropita. Akiropita. Um, welcome. Peggy and Marcina and Val and Nadia. Now, all of these people, including you, if you're following me, are going to be entered to win a Cricut Cutie and a few other things. We do that every Friday. Okay, could I put a link? Could you put the link to where you got it in the descriptions? Um, yes, you can. You can. But to be honest with you, you're better off just sharing things in Design Space because when you go to that community, um, it, it as, as a longtime crafter, if I went to that community and I saw something that didn't have an A on it, I probably would just ignore it, right? Um, inspired daily by Miss Rita to the rescue. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Awesome. So anyway, that's if you, if you get your, um, if you get your SVGs outside of design space. Okay, that's going to do it for me for today. Tomorrow, oh, I don't know what's going on tomorrow. I think I'm making another card tomorrow. Um, but I really want to do, I'm going to play with all my supplies. I also have a bunch of stuff from uh, Michael's that I got on clearance. So I'm going to look through and I will post uh, the project next uh like later on in the day okay all right everybody that's gonna be it for today i hope you have a lovely day um and we will see you again tomorrow i hope at nine o'clock and i will post the link on facebook since right now we are only broadcasting on youtube we used to do facebook but i have to talk to the folks Oh, excuse me. I've talked to the folks that make the software that allows me to do it elsewhere and because uh, we were having a significant number of problems. So if you're wanting to see me on Facebook, you will um, eventually see me back on Facebook, but I just have to fix that problem. Okay. All right, everybody. I hope you have a great day. Keep those Cricut machines crafting. Keep cutting. And we will see you again. Hi, Kathy. Have a wonderful day. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.